James Gunn has finally announced his new slate of DC movies. He did it! This kid's a genius! No, oh, it's just sh Harry. I know a genius when I see one, Gladys. And his first chapter will be called Gods and Monsters, which is a very snidery title. Now, I originally was overwhelmed and didn't know exactly what to think, but I am going to explain why I think this slate is incredibly smart and is a great move from James Gunn, and why I went from being so-so about it to very impressed. It's ass! It's genius! But first things first, it's not a full reboot like we all thought. It's more of a soft reboot that the Flash movie will apparently set up with a brand new ending that James Gunn ordered. So the Flash movie will actually still be a very important piece to James Gunn's DCU going forward. And if they pull that off, I think it could work and be a nice transitional piece to James Gunn's new DCU. Even though I wish they would have just done a full reboot. As is, James Gunn's The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker are still part of the new DCU, as is Jason Momoa and maybe Ezra Miller if he behaves himself. So, let's go through the slate. Now, James Gunn started the presentation by talking about the current DCU movies that are releasing this year, and he said this about Shazam. Shazam has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. So I wonder if that means he is going to keep Shazam in his new DCU. I could certainly see him integrating very well, especially seeing as he is doing a soft reboot. Now the first thing that he announced was an animated show called Creature Commandos that he wrote all the episodes to. It does connect to the DCU and will even utilize the same voice actors that play the live action characters. And you might notice Weasel here, who we had already seen in the Suicide Squad. And these other characters characters that we haven't seen will eventually make their way into live action and will be played by the same actors that are voicing them in this show. The next show is going to be called Walla, and yes, she will still be played by Viola Davis. And this show is very interesting to me, because if you have seen Peacemaker, you will know about the big bomb that gets landed on Walla's lap. And my guess is that she is going to try and take aggressive action against this. So I think this might end up being Peacemaker Season 1.5 before we get Peacemaker Season 2. And it's being spearheaded by two people. Crystal Henry, who was behind The Watchmen Show. I never saw that show, so you guys will have to tell me if she's a good choice or not. And Jeremy Carver, who did Doom Patrol. Which I watched well over a dozen episodes of the first season and then just didn't get around to watching the rest. And he has a tendency to go really over the top, so I hope he's reined in by Crystal Henry. Alright, now we get to the big projects that really kick off the new DCU. The first real entry will be a Superman movie called Superman Legacy, and I am so excited to see what he does with this, but also kind of reluctant. James Gunn has said that he is a huge fan of the Richard Donner movie, so I would assume that he'd know how to write for Superman, but the part of me that is reluctant fears that he won't be able to help himself and will throw in some over-the-top James Gunn-style comedy in there. Now, Legacy, what does that mean? I wonder if it has to do with Superman coming to grips with his purpose for being here. It definitely sounds like there is a lot of family heritage in that title too. James Gunn didn't really give any information about this movie, but what I find interesting is that it's going to release three months before The Batman 2. And James Gunn is still in the middle of writing it, so only time will tell how this movie ends up. But it's great to see that we're finally going to get a Superman movie after all these years. And yes, even without Henry Cavill, as I talked about in length in my previous video. Then we'll be getting a show on HBO called Lanterns, which will include both Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan. Just putting these two together is an ingenious idea to me, due to how much DC fans love to argue about which of the two is superior. Well, now they're both teaming up, so everyone can rejoice. And it is said to be a detective type show, as the Lanterns are essentially space cops. And according to James Gunn, they are going to uncover a terrifying mystery that ties into the larger story of the DCU. So yeah, I am very excited about this. Jon Stewart has been one of my favorite favorite DC superheroes ever since I saw him as a kid in Justice League. And to see him finally get his live action debut is sweet. And thank god this show did not end up in the hands of Greg Berlanti from the DCW shows, which it was supposed to until James Gunn came into the picture. Look at that, he is a real life superhero in this regard. Next up will be a movie called The Authority. I have no idea who these guys are, but it's supposed to be a different look at superheroes according to James Gunn. How different? I don't know. I heard that they are kind of like the boys. I personally think this sounds like another Suicide Squad scenario to me. Let's hope James Gunn and his team will be able to keep these super teams distinct, because that's three super teams that he has right now. 
four if you count Peacemaker. But this is going to be a big, big movie apparently, so we'll see how it goes. And if the rumors I've heard around the internet are true, he apparently is going to have Superman fight the Authority in a future movie. Next up is a HBO show called Paradise Lost. This is meant to be a Wonder Woman origin that doesn't have Wonder Woman in it. The best way to look at this show is as issue zero of a comic. You know, those comics that take place before a comic book movie or comic book video game. That's how I see this show, as chapter zero, which will lead into the Wonder Woman movie that they will most likely do at some point. And it's important to point this out, as some people are saying, what, Superman's getting a big blockbuster movie? Batman's getting a big blockbuster movie? But James Gunn is giving Wonder Woman a show. That's sexist. It's like, no, Wonder Woman is not going to be in this, but this is most likely to Telling the story of what happens in Themyscira before she is born, and it's apparently going to be like a Game of Thrones style show. This isn't at all conventional, but the idea is certainly interesting and most importantly, very different, and I really like that. People are very curious and puzzled by this, and that's because we haven't got anything to compare it to, because guess what? It's different. And from that juxtaposition alone, I am looking so forward to this show. And yes, that does mean that Gal Gadot is not returning either. So we will be getting an entirely new trinity of DC characters here. And Gal Gadot leaving, that is no loss in my view, as her recent movies have shown that she can't act. And even if you take that out of the equation, if they're going to recast Batman and Superman, then I would rather have them recast Wonder Woman as well. Otherwise, it would be weird to see Gal Gadot teaming up with a new Batman and Superman. Next up was The Brave and the Bold. Now the title would immediately alarm many people, as most will associate it with the more light-hearted and goofy animated show of the same name. And James Gunn and goofiness kind of go hand in hand, so it only makes sense that James Gunn would make them goofy. Well, although he doesn't straight out say it, I would be surprised if he made this goofy, as it sounds like it's going to be a father-son story between Batman and Robin that follows the Grant Morrison comic book run. The Robin here being Damian Wayne, and I hate that little brat. He is the worst Robin to me, and I am not particularly happy that he has chosen that little sh**. That being said, he did mention the Bat family, so hopefully the previous members such as Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, and Barbara Gordon will already exist in this universe. Now if they did make a goofier Batman, it wouldn't be as much of a big deal as we still have the much darker Batman from Matt Reeves, so if they do go lighter with this new DCU Batman, that's perfectly fine. But I do hope that they don't go goofy with it, because it doesn't matter if we have Matt Reeves Batman. Batman is Batman, and he is one of the few characters that if you don't strategically write his humour and lighter moments properly, you run the risk of compromising and belittling the internal struggle that makes his character so deep and interesting. So yeah, this sounds like it could be a very different and heartfelt movie, and although it's controversial to have more than one live-action theatrical Batman, more Batman to me personally is not a bad thing. Next up is a Booster Gold series. I was surprised to find that a lot of people didn't even know who Booster Gold was. I, on the other hand, knew exactly who he was, and that's because he had a live action debut years ago when I was a kid. He showed up in season nine of Smallville, and apparently the show did a fantastic job at introducing him because everything James Gunn described him as is 100% how he is portrayed in the show. Brilliant save, sir. Of course it was, Skeets. Say cheese, Junior. Done cheese? Booster Gold is one of comics really popular cult heroes. I'm sure you're all wondering who I am. I'm pure gold, ladies and gentlemen. I am Booster Gold, the greatest hero you've never heard of. Until now! He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. Heroic rescue. He's your right. You're from the future? You're a legionnaire? Not exactly. Hang up the glasses in the red and blue suit. You're not gonna be needing them anymore. The world has me now. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. This was also the live action debut of Blue Beetle, and yeah, they tried, but they clearly didn't have the budget to properly do it on TV back then. My only reservation is in giving Booster his own show. It depends on how many episodes they make, but I really hope it isn't dragged out. But we'll see how it goes. And he is very much a James Gunn character, as it will be a more comedic series, but with some very harsh reality checks, I'm sure. And that poor kid down there, he took the brunt of my ego, Clark. I mean, I always knew all of this was gonna blow up in my face sooner or later. I mean, it always does. I am from the future, but I'm no hero. So I'm very curious to see how it goes, and my bet is that he will cast Chris Pratt in the role. Not a bad choice, but I would like to see someone a little more stiff like Cardboard. Kind of like the guy they used in Smallville, or Major Man in the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, help me! 
And then we get Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Now this Supergirl story is apparently going to be based on the recent Tom Gunn comic book run from 2022. I have never read those comics, but I hear a lot of great things about them, and James Gunn's pitch definitely sounds interesting to me. My only criticism is that I feel like it's too early to introduce Supergirl. We only seem to be getting one Superman movie, and then we are already being introduced to his Supergirl. That's like releasing a Batman movie, and then immediately throwing in Batgirl. It's just too soon. So we'll see how this movie is. It apparently will not have the actress from The Flash, so it will be a different Supergirl. I cannot comment on if that's a good or a bad thing until I've seen the Flash movie, so I'll reserve judgement on that. That being said, the way James Gunn describes the story is very exciting, and I hope it brings a lot of depth to Supergirl and her bad temper, something that only Smallville had brought to the character at this point. And finally, Swamp Thing. This is a project that James Gunn describes as a very dark horror story, and one that will be tonally outside of the DCU, and this is the only project where he really emphasised that. So I wonder just how dark it's going to be, and if he is going to let this movie be rated R. Because if you think about it, from a marketing point of view, horror movies do very well at the box office, so if they smartly pull back on the budget, they could make something very special here. And that is what DC has always been the best at, pushing the rating and going to those dark places that Disney Marvel would never go to with their main MCU. I mean, they are still talking about Blade being a PG-13 for crying out loud. A movie with vampires sucking people's blood, and they want to make the movie PG-13. Yeah, because clearly vampires and PG-13 ratings have gone so well together in the past. And recent rumours suggest that James Mangold is potentially going to direct. I'm super glad that they are hiring him to direct one of these movies. But he's not my first choice for Swamp Thing. Maybe the Lanterns project would be more up his alley, as he has definitely tackled cop dramas before. Hmm, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, that is part of the new DCU slate. Now it's fair to say, and we knew this was going to happen because it's James Gunn, but there are a lot of characters here that are very obscure, and honestly, I think they are spread out enough whilst also keeping the spotlight on the more popular characters. And this is what I think is so smart about James Gunn's slate. It feels nothing like Marvel. He isn't saying, we are setting up all of these movies and they are all going to lead to this big special effects driven film. No, instead, the final movie on this list is Swamp Thing, a full on horror movie. And throughout his 8-10 to 10 year plan, there is clearly going to be a strategy to bring it all together. So I have no issues with regards to the interconnectivity of this universe, because even though it's not clear right now, I truly think that James Gunn has planned it out in a way which is not hastily being thrown together, and is naturally going to get there. Is it different? Yeah. And that's why there are people saying, you should have just done a phase like Marvel. Look, that works for Marvel, but it is too predictable to do that for DC, and that's what makes his slate so exciting. It's nothing like Marvel's slate, and you can't predict where it's gonna go. Whereas with Marvel, their slate is very predictable now, because it's the same strategy they've used before. And that's why I think James Gunn's DC slate is ingenious. It's not copying the homework of another. It 100% looks like it's doing its own thing, and is going to be tying the projects together in different ways. So yeah, there's going to be more to come, but what a fantastic way to end part of their first slate. These movies seem very different, and James Gunn said that he and his team have come up with an 8-10 to 10 year plan, and James Gunn said that he's going to allow the directors to have their own creative vision, and make sure that each movie and project is unique. Something that I have really wanted from Marvel, and something they've been dipping their toes into with Phase 4, but not to the level that Fox's Marvel and DC have had in the past, and it looks like James Gunn is trying to really lean into that with his run, with the DCU. And not only do they sound very interesting, but they don't come across like chapters. A lot of the MCU movies always feel like placeholders until the next big event movie comes out with the true story progression. But several of these movies feel like they are big event movies in of themselves, and not just in terms of spectacle, but emotion as well. So that's the impression I get from the stories that he's adapting, and I like that a lot. The new slate will officially start in July of 2025 with Superman Legacy. So, what did you think of James Gunn's new DCU announcements? Stay tuned as I intend to cover each and every single one of them when they release, including making versus videos of Superman Legacy and even the Brave and the Bold. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon next to that like button so you will stay up to date with all of my future videos. And definitely be sure to donate to me on Patreon as I have some really great content coming there now that I've got my new computer. And I will see all of you very soon. Take care.